Thank you. Um, but I'm telling you, if you need to raise $130 million of venture capital, then you're doing something wrong because you need to need too much, you need too much money. Um, but so yeah, let me, for those of you who don't know me, I have the type of career that your parents would be terrified about. It started all um, very, very um, 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 respectable as a, as a lawyer. And if you read from, right, from the bottom right upwards, then you can see the disaster unfold. So I started actually as a lawyer and then went into, into startup land um, uh, pretty, pretty early, um, um, founded a few companies, we eventually managed to sell one um, to BlackBerry, and, and today my main job, so to speak, is a partner at Amadeus Capital, which is one of the oldest venture capital funds in in Europe. Um, I still also have a few little things on the side, including even some um, coaching work I do for uh, the Horizon 2020 program at for the European Commission. Um, so, when you set about to um, launch a startup, um, because you think, well, you know, all, all, that, all that usual career path, that's, that's too boring, you don't want to do this. Um, uh, you, oh, this, uh, this I should say, actually. So, this is, I will concentrate on, um, on technology startups. If you are, you know, in, 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 in lawyers um, land, um, um, a lot of people are founders, you know, founding your own law firm or um, uh, uh, things like that. Now, those bits, they're usually service driven. And um, uh, also you can charge, uh, you can start charging um, reasonably early. So uh, capital requirements tend to be slightly differently. Um, and, um, but also sources for funding are, are slightly different. Um, if you want to run a law firm, you can probably just go speak to a bank and get a loan. Um, if you are a um, tech startup, that bank will just laugh you out the door. Um, and when I'm, so, so everything I'm telling you now is mainly focused on, um, on technology startups. Most startup journeys start like this, that you sit over, you know, with, with a friend or a colleague over a coffee or a beer, and you have this holy shit moment where you go, oh my God, someone should do this. Um, and um, then, you know, you know, you've got to be awesome at this because if you're not, there's probably someone else doing it. And if they're better than you, then you will lose. Um, then it's important that you build something that is truly amazing. So if you, if church architecture is your thing, try and um, use as your benchmark the um, Sagrada Familia rather than, um, than, than the little church in our town here. Um, because the stats of running a startup successfully are extremely bad. If you are in this just to make money, go join a large law firm or someone like Accenture, et cetera. You're, 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 the odds that you will make money from this are a lot higher. Um, so you have to do this because you need to stand out. If you don't stand out um, um, with, with what you are building, then um, um, uh, the chances that, that, this will, that this will get anywhere are, um, are arguably lower. Um, so, in order to do this, telling a great story is something, um, it's an art form. It's actually an art form that lawyers um, are reasonably well trained to do because that's what many of us do um, um, in, in, our, in our normal professional lives. Uh, because specifically when you are in technology fields that are new, um, uh, you first of all need to, to convince customers, partners, investors, et cetera, that this really will be a great thing. Um, uh, you know, we've had one of our investments, for instance, is a company called GraphCore, and they invented a new type of chip. So it's not a CPU and it's not a GPU that powers graphics. It's what they call an IPU, an intelligent processing unit. And now imagine if you're a founder and you come in and say, well, never mind Intel and all those guys and NVIDIA and Qualcomm, I'm going to beat them all because here's a new chip. You better have a very good story before anyone will listen. And then one thing um, that is super, super important is um, you need a team. Um, you, there, there are very, 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 very few solo founders that can do this successfully. 
And yes, there are outliers. Jeff Bezos was one, um, um, uh, for instance, but it is, it is much harder. To get a startup going is a hard thing in the first place. Um, and it is quite unlikely that you are the rock star in every single field that you need to be covering. Um, so uh, try and get yourself um, a great team together to do this. This piece of paper in the background um, was a, um, 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 a piece that Brian Acton carried around with him in his, in his wallet at all times. Now, you might not know Brian Acton, but he um, was one of the two co-founders of WhatsApp. And he basically said, I need to remind myself that this is what we need to do. And so that if someone says, hey, we should add integrate games into WhatsApp, that I know, no, we didn't. Uh, and with that focus, he managed to um, convince Facebook to pay $19 billion for his company. Um, uh, and the rest is arguably history. So you have all that. You have a great idea. And you've find, found your, your co-founders. And they're all rock stars. And you're up for it. Um, and um, and then, then you sit there and think, OK, so now I need money. Um, and um, um, I'm, I'm going through the various stages and, and we'll only, because we don't have that much time, we'll only highlight um, um, a few things as we go. Um, the first source of funding is whatever you own. Um, and um, this is easier for some and harder for others. Uh, it is important, however, to remember that piece because the earlier you are in your journey um, um, with a startup, the more expensive, so to speak, money is. Um, because you will give away shares in your companies at every step of the way, and the value of your company is lowest at the start. Um, so the longer you can basically fund it, in startup land, they, they call it bootstrapping, um, um, the better. And um, you know, this might include your car. Um, um, because for the, if you start a startup for the, for the next, you know, for the foreseeable future, the next few years, at least, um, um, you will enter a phase of great frugality and, um, uh, no more business class travel and no more five stars hotels. Now, the next phase then is what is known as friends, fools, and family. Um, I would advise against raising money from fools, um, because that usually comes back to haunt you. Friends and family are generally the first people who are ready to believe in you. Why is that? Because they know you, they love you, they would like to be supportive, um, um, et cetera, et cetera. And that is usually just, you know, that's small amounts of money. And again, not everyone has access to that. If you're lucky, you have a rich aunt um, um, uh, who, can, who can write you a check um, uh, to invest in your startup. Um, maybe just some people throw throw money together. That is quite easy in inverted commas in the, on the one hand, because these are all people you know. Um, but it is quite um, um, important to remember that um, um, you know, all of a sudden, your friends and your family become your business partners, basically. And, and you know, to, to, to an extent, you can say they become your bosses, because now they're investors in your company. So it's incredibly important to actually structure this extremely well but also on a non-legal level, to be very, very clear with them um, um, about what that might mean. So if you don't have a very rich aunt, don't ask her to you know, give up her pension fund um, uh, that might feed her in old age in order to bet it on your, on your startup, um, uh, because that might end in, might, might end in tears. Um, you got that. And then you think, hey, you know, the future is bright. I have a great team. We have a great product. Um, we have the first dollars in the bank. So, you know, I've heard of this thing in San Francisco called Y Combinator or 500 startups. They're these, these, they're these programs where, you know, Airbnb and Dropbox and all those, those great startups came from it. And I get to live and go surfing and um, all will be fine. And then you look at those and you realize, oh, shit, there's a really long queue because um, um, pretty much every startup has heard the story of Dropbox and Airbnb, et cetera, and they said that they all want to get in. Now, um, 
not only in real estate, but also in, in startup land, location matters. Um, so if you are based in the Bay Area in San Francisco, yes, Y Combinator might be a great idea. Um, if you're not, if you're somewhere in, 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 in Europe, say, it is a much, much harder thing to get there um, because, you know, we usually don't possess the networks um, in, in faraway places. And um, uh, so it might be important to look um, um, closer to home. Now, closer to home, there, there are these things called accelerators. And Y Combinator and 500 Startups are the two arguably most famous ones. Um, but as I said, they're both in the valley. Um, however, when you look around, there are, I've, I've listed a few here on the slide. There are a few programs um, in, in most places um, um, across, across Europe. Um, these are some of the bigger ones. Waira is backed by Telefonica and um, um, has, has locations and programs in, in uh, Barcelona and Madrid. And um, they, they, they did run one in, in Berlin. They have one in London um, and so on and so forth. Techstars, likewise, um, um, has, has, has different, different locations. Entrepreneur First is a very good one in, in, in the UK. Um, the Creative Destruction Lab is fantastic. Um, it comes originally out of Toronto, but they also do one in Oxford and I suspect somewhere in France. Um, but um, uh, you'll find them. And that brings me to arguably the most important point when it comes to fundraising, um, do your research. There is, I'm, I'm, being, um, I'm meeting many, many startup founders that have questions that I can arguably answer after spending about 10 minutes on Google. Um, and, um, uh, and doing your research is extremely important. Um, there is no excuse for not knowing that there is a program that might fit for your startup. Um, and mind you, not all of these accelerator programs um, um, fit to everyone. First of all, they take a chunk of equity out of you for usually not very much cash in return. Um, but they will help you build a better business. Um, so, you know, there is Quora is generally a very good resource um, uh, uh, online where you um, will find, a, you will find that a lot of investors, but also um, founders um, are very, very, very open and willing to share um, their secrets and their history and their experiences. Um, there is any number of meetups in your city as in, as well as in anyone Co-working spaces tend to be good watering holes for this. Ask hello founders. And last but not least, you know, you have this, this alumni network here around you. Um, uh, uh, go and ask. This is, uh, this is what you can do. Now, then at some stage you go, okay, um, I've done my accelerator program. I've now learned what I need to do and I need to take the next step. And that is when you go on the hunt for angel investors. Angel investors are people that are more or less wealthy um, uh, and very often um, have done well in business elsewhere. Um, and uh, uh, that allows them then to invest in others. Now, if you were in the US, you basically wanted this guy as an angel investor. They're these celebrity angels. Um, if you want to do a legal tech thing, you probably want this guy. He's the senior partner of Clifford Chance. Um, you know, a lot of people basically go and say, oh, we basically, if we, if we get um, um, a famous person to invest in me, then, um, uh, then this will make my life a lot easier because then everyone uh, will know that and I can go around Biz Stone, who co-founded Twitter as an investor in my company, um, uh, that will make it a lot easier. That might be true. Um, on the other hand, you have to be careful what does it give you in addition to just cash. Um, specifically in the very early ages of your <clears throat> startup journey, it is really, really important to surround yourself with people who um, 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 can bring either domain expertise, um, a personal network, um, you know, in, in, your, in the market that you're trying to tackle, um, former founders that can give you advice on, on, on how to build your startup um, and so on and so forth. So only because someone <clears throat> is famous um, shouldn't qualify them to become your investor. And again, also in the angel space, location is important. It is 
much easier to find um, a, a bunch of angels if you're in the valley. Um, the next easiest spot is probably London. Um, um, but the, you have these networks everywhere and they are evolving. And the, the younger the startup ecosystem is, the fewer of them um, um, uh, there are. But, um, you know, it's, it's, I mean, a place like, let's say, Gothenburg, which isn't really known as startup capital, um, has its own angel investing groups. Now, angels, some angels invest alone. Um, um, a lot of angels invest in syndicates. And, um, and again, Google is your friend. You can usually find out um, um, a lot more on who the important players are um, uh, and um, uh, who you might want to speak to. <clears throat> These are a few um, um, resources where you can start. AngelList is sort of like a meta list. The idea was that um, um, well-known angels can um, uh, uh, can get out there and build syndicates where other people can then invest alongside them. The UK Business Angel Association is a very good resource. Cambridge Angels is probably the most powerful syndicate in 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 Europe. Um, but um, there are there are there's any any number out there. And um, again, angel investors, most of them at least, tend to be very helpful because um, as often former entrepreneurs themselves, they know the pains that that um, uh, that a startup goes through. One thing I should say is you will find programs out there that want you to pay to pitch um, and they will make a lot of promises on the amazing high net worth individuals that you will find in a room and if only you pay them 295 pounds or 495 euros um, to do this, then everything uh, will go. This is not how it should work, and I would never, ever do this. Again, research is your friend there, and I'll, I'll, I'll not repeat all of this, but it is, it is really the most important thing. And here, maybe as an interlude before I get to the last bit um, on, in inverted commas, proper venture capital, <clears throat> there's a great book that you might want to read, which is called Venture Deals. Um, the author is Brad Felt, B-R-A-D-F-E-L-D. Um, and um, that explains the business model of a venture capital fund, um, which is where I get to now. So once you have exhausted um, 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 all those sources that we've, that we've gone through, and by now your company is probably about a year old, maybe, maybe a year and a half, and, um, um, and through friends and family and angels and, and maybe an accelerator program, you wouldn't have raised anything between 150 to maybe half a million um, and um, to go further and 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 uh, do what is known a proper seed round or a round um, um, you now need institutional capital because um, uh, you know over there are not that many angels who, who who sign six six or seven figure checks there are some but um, um, but they're 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 quite rare now, venture capital as an asset class um, sits on the riskiest end of finance, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> Amadeus, the fund I'm, I'm with, we are on that, on that sharp end um, um, of it. We're an early stage investor. We invest in these seed and A rounds, usually with checks between half a million, two million pounds. Um, and, um, but this, for many founders, this is the first time where you actually then speak to people who do this professionally, so to speak. Um, VCs are rare, and some think they're all powerful and also <clears throat> a bit scary. Um, if they are, they're probably not good ones. Um, the good ones, I think, tend to be quite approachable, um, and, um, and they should be. In our case, all of us have been former entrepreneurs ourselves, so we know how it feels on the other side of the table, and. Um, uh, uh, so whenever a founder would approach us, we would, um, um, at, you know, at least offer friendly feedback, even if it is not an area or indeed a startup that we would, um, uh, that we would be ready to invest in. Um, for venture capital, these three things are, are incredibly important um, um, because you have to, to consider a fund like ours, we would get 
we'll see about a thousand pitches per year and we will end up investing in maybe four or five. So um, if you don't know your stuff, then um, you, know, you will almost fall at the very, very first hurdle. Then, and you will hear this a lot when, you are, when, you're, when, you're, when you're trying to get your startup off the ground, that people say, oh, you need a warm introduction. Um, now, whereas this is not necessary, but if you, if you think about this, you know, to try and cut through the noise of a thousand pitches, it is always easier um, if uh, the introduction to such an investor comes through someone they know. Um, and here's a little secret tip for, because we're all lawyers, law firms often are a very, very good referral route um, because the lawyers are all the time working, working um, 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 with VCs on actually finalizing those investments. So those tend to be standing relationships um, uh, where, people, where people look at. There are some VCs who will actually say, well, if you can't find anyone who knows me, then you know, you're not hustling hard enough and therefore I don't believe in you and I will not invest. That I find is a little bit cynical, but wherever you can try and get a warm introduction or you know, find, them, find them in other ways. And then the last bit should be, obvious, um, but it is due practice. And um, by that, I mean really just that. It is, you know, when, when um, uh, uh, it's a little bit like, I don't know, um, going to your first client meeting on your own, you, um, um, uh, you probably should practice that. Going on stage and doing a talk for the first time, you will absolutely practice that. Um, pitching well is hard. And, um, uh, and it requires pr practice. To give you one example, I've been, you know, for the last 20 years or so, um, doing this either as a founder or, or an investor. I've, I've um, just before this lockdown, um, worked with one of my startups on preparing their next funding round. We had 27 iterations of the pitch deck. And this was, this is basically people around the table who have done this for a long time and are quite experienced. It still took us 27 iterations before we thought it was acceptable. You know, not awesome, but acceptable. So that's important. Oh, and here's the follow-up calls on the uh, um, slides on this. Um, and then one final bit, time is of the essence, and this is true um, in normal life, uh, and even more so, of course, in corona life. Um, to raise funds from, from, in particular for venture capital, but also from angels, there's basically seasons. Um, the windows opens usually at, in February and goes, it closes in June and it opens up again in September and it closes um, in, in, in early December. And this is because investors tend to have families and children have school holidays and then they're not there. Um, so again, this isn't, there's no hard and fast rule on it, but it is much easier to raise money and, 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 and get momentum into that fundraising process um, um, in, 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 that, in that time. Um, right now, is, it is even harder, um, specifically because um, of those warm introductions. You know, we can, we, we, a lot of us are prevented from social interaction directly. And if you don't know anyone, it is much, much harder um, to generate a personal rapport um, remotely. It is, again, it is not impossible. Our fund, we've done two completely remote investments um, um, in this period where we have never met the founders, uh, one in Spain and one in the UK. Um, <clears throat> but the chances are, um, um, are lower right now and the process will often take a bit longer because um, you know, all of a sudden, I don't know. Take the lawyer, right? It's you're sitting at home and you're you're drafting the subscription agreement, and you have three little kids running around. Um, uh, it it all takes a little bit longer. Um, and then you're there, and um, the money's in the bank, and um, uh, and then you 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 take your team and you start building and you go on. And then the question is only, you know, frame it right, make it big, and then drive it to that elusive exit at the very, very end. Um, with that, I stop. Um, if you, yeah, we have tons of time for, for um, 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 questions. I, I think uh, if you want to hit me directly, you can do that with these contact details.